back of the naturopath. Thanks for coming back. The brain and the gut. We can't stop the connection. It's an amazing connection. And look how many sayings or quotations you may have heard regarding the digestive system. He hasn't got the guts to do that. I've had a gut-wrenching experience, you know. So many people associate the gut also with emotions. For example, how, you know, think about a time when you felt very angry or very upset. You probably couldn't eat. Think about when you had to give a presentation. You had to stand up in front of a group of people to give a talk. How did your tummy feel? Was it a bit sick or nauseous? It may have been. The connection is massive. In fact, scientists are now believing that there are poor, even more neural connections and hormonal productions in the, in the small bowel than there actually are in the brain. So in some sense, the, the small intestine controls the brain to a very large extent. This puts a whole new meaning um, you know, to eating and thinking, doesn't it? Eating and you know, brain function. So whatever goes in here and affects this is going to very much affect that. And maybe, you know, that could be part of the reason why so many people have got such a, a, a hard time in life. You know, they can't think properly. They can't remember things properly because, you know, they're not really getting uh, not just the good connections, but they're just not getting the associated uh, nutrition that the gut really needs to produce these hormones, all right, for things to act properly. So I read a very interesting study published in November 2017. And it was all about Alzheimer's disease, dementia, memory loss, uh, and the gut function. And it concludes basically saying here that microbial, colo microbial colonization of the gut plays a key role in postnatal development and maturation of immune, endocrine, and even neural, like the nervous system. These processes are key factors underpinning central nervous system signaling. So how the central nervous system talks you know, the brain and the spinal cord, how all the nerves all work together. Uh, it, it, a huge big um, role in this whole association here is the microbes in the gut because they pull a whole lot of information together. <clears throat> Indeed, understanding the gut microbiota is an important in relationship to inflammation and metabolic diseases that have a direct relationship to the pathogenesis of, you know, uh, Alzheimer's disease and dementias. So what that basically means in English is that trying to understand that the key role that these bacteria play and the microbiome play will be you know something that will really help us to accelerate our knowledge and understanding of how the brain functions and moreover how cognition functions right. uh, this will be a very important step in order to take preventative measures as early diagnosis identification of new therapeutic targets and developments of novel drugs they always talk about drugs these guys eh? Thus, the modulation of gut microbiota by probiotics or directly targeting gut microbiota enzymes it may be growing an area for functional food industries with the goal of de decreasing the widespread growth of adiposity, you know, obesity, insulin resistance, and also Alzheimer's disease and dementia. So science is now starting to understand that by looking at very specific probiotics and enzyme combinations, they can actually improve the gut function, which in turn will improve those neural connections with the brain and allow a person to keep good memory and good cognitive function as they get older. What concerns me is so many elderly people take medications, you know, not just one, two, sometimes a handful of drugs once or twice a day. How's all that garbage in your gut going to affect how you think? It just can't be right. Anyway, it's your call, it's your body. I won't be taking that stuff. Thanks for tuning in.